What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tech with Solutions with another beginner video. Like you guys asked, you wanted me to make a follow-up video with Ismail, who is someone more in the kind of beginner side of day trading in the stock market. One of the things that we talked about last time in the previous video is how he made a little bit over a hundred dollars on his American Airlines position. Now, what we wanna talk about is following up with Ismail, what he's paying attention to right now and breaking down his entire trade plan. I want you guys to understand that just because he sees value in something, or even when I see value in something, at the end of the day, there is no such thing as a perfect day trade. When it comes down to day trading in the stock market, just like investing in the stock market, it all comes at some form of risk. In this video, he's simply going to be sharing his thought process and his entire plan on why he's paying attention to well, I'm gonna have Ismail take over and actually break it down for you guys. So um, let's go ahead and get started. He was actually quite popular in the last video. So if you wanna see more videos with Ismail, all you guys have to do is drop a thumbs up and don't forget to follow my boy Ish on Instagram. I'm gonna put that with the first link down below. Hit him up, ask him any questions about getting started and I'm sure he would love <laughs> to answer those for you. So all right, um, what, what is it that you're paying attention to and why? Um, so today I traded, or I'm in a position, I want to say I like completed a trade. Uh -huh. um, I bought 40 shares of you guys. Okay, so when it comes down to you guys, for those that are unfamiliar with what that is, uh, you guys is a triple leverage ETN, and it follows the direction of natural gas very closely. So when natural gas goes up, so does you guys. When natural gas goes down, so does you guys. The inverse ETN for you guys is D gas, and this one is a triple leverage, which pretty much means that when natural gas itself moves 1%, you guys, in a sense, moves roughly about three times that, so about 3%. So it does come at a greater form of risk, but like we've said before, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. And when it comes down to day trading in general, um, it of course comes at a greater form of risk. And I want Ismail, not just to talk about, anyone can talk about what they see value in. I want him to explain why he is in a position, why he already purchased right now, and what his entire trade plan is. Entry, exit, stop loss, and why he sees potential. So, all right, so I got filled at 23.25. That's my average purchase price. So um, 23.25, yeah. so we have that right around here, right? So now it's breaking above the middle VWAP on yeah. the day. And um, is this going to be a day trade or a swing not, trade? It is not. So my intention behind this, behind this is not a day trade, it's a swing trade. And the reason is because when I go to the 180 day chart, um, I drew a support and resistance. How it is there, I don't know if I'm gonna draw it for Yeah, so pretty much an ascending support that we see right here yeah. on natural gas itself or on new gas itself, right? Yeah, and it's an uptrending. Uh, um, pattern support what I see yeah based off of recent patterns overall yeah. uh, with the understanding that natural gas has been bearish yeah um, it is still trading below the EMA line so yes. what are you doing you said that you already mm -hmm. bought 40 shares yeah of you guys so um, no I would have normally bought like more than 40 shares if uh, I'm like certain it's gonna break above but I'm not so I'm doing a smart position size so that if it doesn't go according to plan like my loss is much smaller than normally would be Definitely, and that's something that we've talked about so many times before. I feel like, you know, if you trade with $1,000 and you see potential, you know, a lot of people see value in you guys right now, but at the end of the day, like, you guys can continue to sell off. Like today, we saw it um, still aggressively sell off. Uh, it has recovered quite a bit, but it doesn't have to bounce. And one of the things that Ismail's doing is, you know, we've always explained one of two approaches. First, uh, you know, if you wanna be extremely conservative, you can then wait for full on confirmation. And a lot of people were asking, what does that mean? Well, when you look at natural gas and how it's been selling off, uh, some of you guys might be asking, why are you looking into you gas? Well, right now, because you gas sold off so much, it's finding a support based off of previous lows and the upside potential. So based off of where it's at right now, around $23.44, based off of previous highs, let's say it ends up hitting $36, that's a 53% return. And right now we just got the alert that you guys is making higher highs. So because the upside is so great, Yes, I do see why people are already getting in right now with the idea that it doesn't have to push up. So what Ismail is doing, to put it in very simple terms, is he took a much smaller position size. So if you trade with $1,000, he pretty much took a 
$300 initial position and if it confirms that overall uptrend, he'll add more to his position size when it breaks above the EMA line. So one of the things that I do wanna ask you is because you are aware that natural gas can get rejected and can sell off, you said that you're taking a smaller position size, but on top of that, what is your risk management? I know when I first got started, that was always the biggest area of opportunity. So uh, that is something I feel like I'm still, or I still am learning or struggling with, like when should I decide where like my selling point should be? But I was thinking of like, if it goes close to around $22 is when I would like sell my shares as a stop loss. Okay, so you would cut losses based off of your average purchase price of yeah. what was it, 23, 25? 25, yeah. Okay, so $23.25 to a $22 price point. Yeah. That's a 5% loss. Yeah. So that's the risk that yeah. you're taking on, right? Yeah. Versus the upside potential of over 60%. Yeah. Okay, so you guys can do the math of a 5% potential for loss in comparison to a 60% upside margin. Uh, one of the things that we also have to take into consideration is the reason that he has a smaller position size is some of you guys might be asking or saying that, whoa, 5% is a big loss. And I do agree, but it's a big loss when you're fully invested. If you reduce your position size, the cool thing about that is that the dollar amount at risk is much less. So instead of losing 5% of your $1,000 account, because he's in only with 30%, that's like losing 5% of a $300 account. All right, so now, now that we talked about your entry, now that we talked about why you see potential on the upside versus the downside, we talked about your stop loss. Where is it that you plan to sell? Are you someone that's you know gonna wait for you guys to hit highs of 36, $37? Mm -hmm. No. Or where would you? Uh, I'm planning to sell before the SMA line, kind of like in the other video. Um, I feel like it doesn't really pay too much. Not that it doesn't pay much. How do I say it? It's like it's gone over multiple times. So I think it will or it can go over the SMA line. But I'd rather just like, again, have a green trade and like be consistent in that aspect rather than yeah. like get greedy and wait for it to go all the way to the top. Like I'd rather just cover what I can and then definitely. And if it continues to option, then maybe you can add more shares. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. So he's saying that he plans to sell as it approaches the SMA line, which offers about uh, nearly a 20% uh, return. Uh, and the last thing that I wanna ask you is, when would you add more to your position size? So you said you have 40 shares right now. Mm -hmm. When would you consider buying more of you guys? As it either gets closer to the EMA line or passes the EMA line. So you just want confirmation of it trading above the EMA line and confirmation of an uptrend? Yes. Okay, I like that. So uh, let us know in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, we would love to make a follow-up video with Ismail's position. One of the things that I actually do want to follow up with is Ismail ended up uh, going back into American Airlines after selling his previous position because he still sees value in the overall upside potential. And a quick little update right now, American Airlines is trading at $10.10. And on the open, Ismail is up $15 and he has about 85 shares. So uh, still, American Airlines needs to prove a lot more before we get that full on confirmation. But we just wanted to provide you a very quick update on this current swing trade with American Airlines based off of our previous video. If you would like to see a follow up video on if it goes according to plan or if things go south for Ismail and he ends up having to cut losses, all we ask you to do is smash that like button and we would love to make a follow up video for you guys as well. One of the last things is I do wanna update you guys on our overall tech buds shop. We do have these new Day Trader Wall Street Journal mouse pads and if you guys haven't checked that out, that's the fourth or fifth link down below. It's the shop tech buds website. So make sure you check that out if you guys were looking to pimp out your trading station. We really do appreciate you guys' time. Don't forget to stay connected and join our free Facebook group. That's gonna be that second link down below. If you guys have any questions for Ismail, again, the first link down below is so you guys can follow him on Instagram and spam him with any questions you guys might have. Really do appreciate you guys' time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.